In this tutorial, we're going to be working with a hair care product label. Uh, this will be printed onto a metallized material, uh, which would then require a white ink separation being created. Now, using the CoreLogix uh, separation tools, we never have to make a white ink plate, even though we print with a white ink. What we do is we design an effect printing plate where you want to actually see the effect. So for example, the silver swoosh across the front here, which would be silver foil substrate coming through, we simply design that as a silver spot color. And then if we wanted these colors in the background to be metallic and the lozenge colors to be metallic, we just use the ColorLogic color palettes. Uh, the white areas would be your document white. You never ever have to make white separation. Now, if you were to make a white ink separation on here, you have to make the white knockout mass work in reverse because the white ink is designed to be where you don't want to see the effect. And this means it's time consuming. It takes a lot of time in the design or the pre-press department to make those white separations. It's more complex because you cannot see white ink on your computer screen. Therefore, you have to color up something random. So for proofing applications, it makes it more difficult. Uh, so all in all, it's a really long winded process to make white ink plates. So if you can remove all that, you can speed up the design process extremely quickly. So what we're going to do here, um, typically a design would then be printed on a repeat. So normally you'd have, for example, this, um, this pinky colored card uh, label in the top right hand corner will be step and repeated across the, the, the 12 inch repeat in this instance. And that is done typically because a flexo press um, would have, say, for example, maybe seven units. Now, if you look at the colors on this design here, and I'm just going to add in some ColorLogic logos as well. If we were to reproduce this using a metallic ink system, and now let's forget about printing on foil substrates, we could also do this with metallic ink, then you would count up each one of the spot colors. So we'd have maybe a, a spot, um, like a bluish kind of greeny colored here, that might be a metallic. We'd have a metallic in the background, metallic swoosh, the ColorLogic logos with metallic. So you could literally end up with 11 colors on this one design alone, which means you wouldn't put it through a flexo press. But the whole point of the CoreLogic system is you can take a design and put it reproduced across the, uh, the press sheet, which means you can get multiple SKUs onto one repeat. So instead of having multiple uh, repeats, you know, in this instance, if you've got 10 different products, there'll be 10 different repeats. You can put them all onto one layout at the same time. OK, so what we're going to do here is, first of all, use the ColorLogic palettes and plugins. So I'm just going to turn off the main artwork and you'll see in the background that we have some solid colors and some gradients. So what I'm going to do is the first top four colors here. Now, I've been through this artwork before and I've just made some little um, digital notes on here so that I can actually see what I want to be replicating. But what you would really do is you, you need to have the ColorLogic swatch book. The swatch book contains all the colors in our system and the designer will go through the swatch book and choose the colors they want to work with. So in this instance, I'm looking at my swatch book now. I'm going to go to the window menu and I go to my graphic styles and I'm going to go to color logic metallic silver graphic styles. This contains every single color in our swatch book as a solid and also every color with its dimensional and watermark effect equivalent. Now I'll come back to the dimensional and watermark effects in a little bit because I'm going to go through and color up this file um, using those techniques a little bit later on. So first of all, I'm going to go through and I'm going to make this number 30. So I'll click and apply. The next one I'm going to make number 70, so let's scroll down to number 70. The blue one we're going to make number 110, find number 110. And then this last one across the top will have 179, uh, 179. So if we now have a look at our separations and we turn off our CMYK, you'll see it's automatically generating that silver effect printing plate in the background. So the silver will be your silver substrate and the white area will be the white ink. You could also print this, like I say, with a metallic ink base system, in which case if this was a metallic silver ink, the silver is a silver ink, the white is your white label. So it makes no difference how you design or how you output the file because it's the same process for whether you print with metallic inks or whether you print on metallic substrate with a white ink. So next we're going to work with gradations. Now gradations work with a different type of color palette. So using our system, we can blend multiple metallic colors together. Now we're keeping this quite simple. We're choosing two different colors. So for example, in this one, we're going to be working with number 50 on the left hand side and number 175 on the right. What you would do is you would go to your swatch libraries this time and go to the color logic swatches. These are all the colors 
in CMYK format only. So it's just the CMYK. And this is used in conjunction with our action set. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up our action set. So let's go to the window. Let's go to actions. And if you haven't already loaded this into the system, as soon as you install ColorLogic onto your computer, you'll be able to load the action and just go into your actions folder for Adobe. I'm using Adobe Illustrator CC at the moment and click on the ColorLogic Metallic Silver. So that loads just a simple script that allows you to then be able to work with our files. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go to the swatch libraries, which I just brought up. And I'm going to choose my two colors. So in this instance, I chose number 50 on the left from this list, and I chose number 175 on the right. Now with that done, keeping your direct selection tool active, which is the second one down in your toolbar, select it, go to your actions, select the ColorLogic action, and play the script. What it does is it's then going to make that element metallic. Now the important thing is you've always got to have and the color logic spot color in your document. Now we already had this in our document because we worked with these um, graphic styles so it automatically brought in the spot color. But for that script to work, it needs to see the color. If it doesn't have the color logic separation in your document, it will flag up a warning and saying, cannot finish the scripting. So all I need to do now is go through on each one of these designs and play that script and it's going to make each one of these designs metallic. So in each instance I've chosen two colors from the color logic system and blended them together. So that's now done. If we look at our separations we've now added that metallic plate in the back of them. So quite simple there. Next we're going to go into our layers. I'm going to work with an effect pattern now. So I've created these floral type patterns in the background. So first of all, I'm going to choose this one up in the top here and I'm going to edit um, the edit the contents of that mask. And now the background color we used was number 30, I believe, in that one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to my graphic styles. I'm going to find number 30 that we were working with and I want to have dimensional effect this time. So I select the dimensional effect. OK. So that's going to add this effect into that area. It's basically putting a white ink plate behind the back of all that. So what color did we have on this one? We have number 70. So let's do the same thing on that one. Let's go to our clipping mask, edit the contents, and go to number 70, dimensional. 70 dimensional. Next one was number 110. Edit that. And go to number 110. Now what the dimensional effect is doing is it's actually removing, oops, made it the watermark. It's actually removing the metallic area. So it's actually putting a white ink mask behind the back of all this. Now I'll show you that in a little while because it will be easy to explain once to turn the separations off. Last one, number 179. Uh, so edit that. Clip the mask, edit. 179. Uh, well, there we are. Oops. Dimensional effect. Okay, so now let me turn off my separations here. You'll see that it's basically on these top ones here, it's actually removed the metallic area. So it's put a white ink mask behind the back. Now, can you imagine trying to do a white knockout mask for these complex designs? where basically you want the white in the background to be zero and these areas to be solid. You basically have to create all these effects. Now we do these automatically just by using our effect separations. What's going to happen is when light shines off this background, it's going to be a, like a golden foil. And this is going to be like a process color. So you're going to have this contrasting element where your design is going to come to life and have a real dimensional effect type um, sort of pattern. This is why we call it dimensional effect. Now, we're going to do the other two designs down here, slightly different. Now, in this instance, because we've got a blend, we've got two metallic colors blending together. We can't just apply a graphic style because the graphic style is a solid type of color, like a solid magenta or a blue or a green. Now, we have to have a blend. So in this instance, I'm going to go to my clipping mask, edit the content, and I'm going to take, um, I'm going to do a gradient over the top. Um, in fact, actually, let's do this a slightly different way. We'll do it an even simpler way. All we have to do is color it up as the color logic separation, which is the silver, the color logic silver. Take the value down to 80% of color logic, 
and then put on your overprint fill. And what that's done now, you won't be able to see it very much here until I turn off the um, separations. You'll see that in the background, we've actually created a subliminal hidden pattern. Now that subliminal hidden pattern is 80% of the background, the background being 100%. And what's going to happen is when you move that in the print, it will appear and disappear. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one as well. I'm going to object, clipping mask, edit contents, and I'm going to put it to silver to 80%. And then set that to print. Okay, so we've got our patterns done. So now what we've got is we've got our metallic patterns in the background. We've got metallic gradations with some watermark effects, and we've got some just metallic blends along the bottom. I'm going to go back to my layers, turn on my main artwork, and then I'm going to decide to choose all these swooshes. So I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to add that. And let's find, okay, let's just select same fill color. So it's actually picking up behind the back in these drop shadows as well. I'm going to make those the color logic spot color. So that'll be the silver foil, that'll be the solid foil areas coming through. Now, on these lozenges here, we've gone through and we've added our colors. So we want number 139. So I can go to my graphic styles. I can choose number 139. There we go, and it's made it. Or the other option is we can use our script again. So we can go through and make our script and play that in each instance and make any element metallic. So I quite often use the action set on its own because all you have to do is select the element you want to make metallic and play. Now this is designed for making a fill metallic. If you're gonna do a stroke, you then obviously make sure that you um, do the um, overprints correctly. I'm just going to do this last one. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up these gradients in the background. Now, normally you'd have to do the white knockout masks on here as well. And trying to do a white reverse knockout mask on a gradient is a lot more complex. So I'm just going to take the Cologic Silver, put that into the middle, and I've now got a blend of silver going to white. That's all I have to do. And let's turn that off and see where we're up to now. Okay, so. Now I've added in more effects, you can see how we're building this design up. The next thing I need to do is I need to select this word colour. So I'm going to select the same fill colour. And let's just get rid of that one. And these elements in here, because I don't want to work with these patterns. Okay, and get rid of that. And of course get rid of this one over here. Just uh, turn that layer off actually, it'll be easier. Turn that off. Zoom in, select same fill color. And of course, I've reselected that again. Okay, go back. And that's because my patterns in the background are the same color as the header. And select that one okay so now we've selected them so what we can do here is they're all just made up of this um, color logic colors so if we look at the fill it's got a fill of number 179 so we could either use our action set but another way that we can work is through our appearance we can simply go to our appearance and add in a new appearance layer if we so wish what I'm going to do this time is just um, use a script Oops, wrong one. add the color over the top For some reason, it's not doing it. It's probably because they're all grouped as part of elements. Something I'm noticing at the moment. There we go. Let's go to the appearance. So the appearance, duplicate the appearance, put the silver on the top, and set it to overprint. We've now made that metallic. So we can do this in each instance. Go through these. And it should allow me to pick them up. What we're doing is just adding more metallic. So again, if you just remember that every time you would work with a different metallic area, you'd have to make the white knockout masks. Notice how all we're doing is just applying our color palettes all the way through our design. And it makes it extremely quick and simple because as I mentioned before, you never have to make a white knockout mask again. Okay. 
Now, a bit later on, after we finish this design, we're going to actually go through and um, visualize this file using a piece of software called the FX Viewer, which is the ColorLogic 3D visualization room. It's, uh, it works on a, the basis that you can take your five color PDF file, bring it into the software, and actually see the effect on the screen before you have to go to proof or print, which means that from what we're doing here, we'll be able to get the concept right before we actually have to run out any costs of doing proofing. Okay, and we'll put the O-print on the silver. Okay, so I think I've now done all my files. So let's just turn off our CMYK. Yep, we've got all our lozenges in metallic, we've got the headers in metallic, we've got the backgrounds with the knockout effects, these are what we call dimensional effect, we've got a watermark effect in the background, we've got all those gradations and solids. Okay, so that's all done. Now, one last thing, in the middle of this design you'll see an image of a car. So we can actually do things with a, on a photo realistic effect. So I'm actually going to go through here, I'm going to open this up in Photoshop. And just to show you what I've done here, it's, uh, basically it's um, a standard four color image. I'm going to go to the ColorLogic plugin. So we'll load up the ColorLogic separation plugin. This is a multilingual plugin, so depending on what version of computer system you're using, I'm using an English version of Photoshop, so use the English script. It's going to go through, calculate the metallic effect for you to put into the different tonal areas within inside the image. So it's actually generated this separation, fifth separation. I'm going to go through, make a mask. Um, unfortunately, we cannot do that bit for you. And just delete the unwanted area that you don't want to be metallic. So now I've just got the car and the alloy wheels in metallic. Now the next thing that I normally do on an image like this, I'll just go to my curves and just look for the, the main peak of the shadow data and just bring your slider across. And that just makes your image a little bit more, um, more metallic effect going into it. Okay, so from there, um, we can do different things. So I'm going to make a selection of a pattern that I've done. I'm just going to remove the, the wheel areas. I'm going to hide my selection. So what I've done is I've actually created um, sort of like a honeycomb pattern. And this is just purely something that I like doing, playing around, adding some different effects into your car. So we can actually pull a little bit more on the front. Okay, so it's really about just trying to get some contrast in there. So this is basically called dimensional effect, but inside Photoshop. And I've put a blend through it, so it's actually going from knocking the effect out down to sort of like a 50% tints. And that way you're going to have this real contrasting area. And the only way to really be able to see what this is going to look like is to get a sample from us or look at it in the visualization tool. So I'm just going to now save that as metallic. And save that as a TIFF with a spot color on. And actually, I don't need my alpha channels in here. Let me get rid of those so I don't confuse the system. Save as. Metallic. Okay, close that down. Go back into Illustrator. Oops. Open up my old version of Illustrator. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my links. Find the concept car image. Relink that and I think where did I create it? There we go. Okay, so that's brought the file back in. Last thing we're going to do is turn on my um, ColorLogic logos, add a little bit of branding to it, and that's the job done. We've actually gone through now, and you'll see what happens. We have solid colors, we've got gradations, we've got dimensional effect, we've got watermark effects, we've got the blends across the bottom, and then we've got this photorealistic image separation of different pixels in metallic going all the way through the body of the car with a dimensional effect pattern. And then you've got our metallic uh, ColorLogic logo. So from there, I'm now going to save that file. I'm just going to save this um, as a normal Illustrator file, but then I'm also going to save a PDF file. Now, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to want to be able to see what this design is going to look like. So before I actually go out and uh, run this out to, um, to proof or press, I want to do this uh, visualization in the, the ColorLogic FX viewer. And one thing I have noticed is we don't have the slug names on there. So that's not a problem. I'll add those back in when I make my PDF file. And it's just saving now. the problem with large files takes a little bit of time to save 
and obviously the lady in this instance she's obviously going to be in CMYK so behind the back of there there's automatically a white mask because you're not having to make the white it's all done fully automatic uh, there we go product names put those back on okay so let's save as PDF and this is just a normal PDF let's do a PDF uh, press quality it doesn't make any difference how you save it what it is, is it's saving the five separations that you have, which is the color logic separation and then that CMYK. So no matter how many colors we use, you will only ever have five colors in your design. And it then takes that into the FX viewer and visualizes it in this 3D environment. And then it actually applies the metallic effect to that separation. It can only visualize color logic files. It cannot do Pantone. So if you uh, have a job with Pantone metallics, it'll just, it won't show it in metallic at all. Um, the idea behind this is it cuts out those iterative steps of going to proof or print. So let's just take that PDF file, drag that onto FX Viewer. It's going to open up the 3D environment. It's going to rasterize the file. It's actually taking your PDF file and running it through a rip in the background. So it's a little low end rip that we have um, in the back of it. And we have an option of two different environments to be able to view in. We can have a what we call a spherical environment, which is a 3D graphical studio so it's just like a normal room um, and then we also have a 3d light box so the first one that will come up hopefully will be the uh, 3d room environment uh, no it's actually the the light box let's just work with the um, environment first so our system has only a couple of items in here the only thing you need to worry about is the view menu so I'm going to change the environment to a studio so you can see the 3d studio and we can actually go all the way around here if we want. And you've got light sources coming in from different directions. Now the whole point of this is that light and shadow bounces off your design. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm visualizing printing on foil. And now I can actually see my design on the screen in foil. And we can see these watermark effects in the background. We can see the dimensional effect happening. And we can also see how we did that pattern on the front end of the car. And then all our gradations. So all the effects can be, can be seen here. If we decide we don't like what we've done, we can then go back to the graphic design stage, make the correction, and see um, a new file by just re-visualizing it. We could also visualize printing with a metallic ink. So if you decide all of a sudden that you don't want to print this on a foil substrate, maybe they haven't got the budget to print on foil, you can then switch it to printing on metallic ink. Now, metallic ink would put a metallic silver ink underneath this, such as printing on a UV flexo press, and then you'll be able to see the design printed with metallic. Metallic ink effect is not going to be as visual as a foil. Foil is always going to be more chromatic and more visually appealing, but um, this at least gives you a cost saving. Now, if we were to look at each one of these as a metallic ink, as I said before, we had about 11 colors on one design, but I've calculated on here we have we would have, we'd have 31 different spot metallic areas. Or if you were printing this with a foil, um, like doing foil stamping, um, if you're putting foil stamping in the background, or even just to put a foil stamp on the lozenge on the front here, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just for the for the lozenges. Not to mention the logos and the drop shadows, everything else. But you could have literally up to 31 different foils. So using Color Logic, we actually can take these jobs that would have much more um, effect plates and you know spot colors and reduce them down to one layout. So that's a five color file, 31 different colors and multiple effects on there as well. I'm just going to visualize that on foil again. And the last environment I want to show you is the viewing booth. Now this is for more like a, a pre-pressed light box. And what happens here, I'll just zoom in and show you. It's actually an overhead light box, so it's a 3D environment again. This time the light source is above the top of you, so you have to push the print backwards to get the light to shine on it. And you can see how it works. You can even pick up the little bit of texture in the foil in the background, and that's what we do. Okay, so if we look at the top here, this top row of designs, when we were talking about dimensional effects, and if you look at the background, this little floral pattern that we had, we've got a dark yellow, dark green, dark blue, dark magenta. Now watch what happens when we move it out of the light. We go to light, 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 light. So you've got a light magenta, light blue. You can see how it switch and change it goes from a lighter to a darker color. That's our dimensional effect. And the same on the front of the car. Watch the little honeycomb patterns change from lighter to darker. It's like switching lights on and off. 
So you can actually add a lot more levels of design into your artwork just by using that one color logic separation. It's very simple, it's very quick, and you've never once had to make a white ink separation. So there we go. We have 10 different hair care products, one car product in the middle. Every design's got something different on it, yet they're all consistent with a, with a themed effect. We then visualize it, we've got the job right, we can then send it to proof or to print. And that way we're going to have him maintain maximum uptime in the press because the press is going to be printing live jobs instead of doing it as a proofing solution. And the design studio is going to be getting the job right and being more economical because you're not having to spend time doing those uh, white ink masks. So there we have it, ColorLogic. Um, please, if you'd like a sample of this, contact our office at info at color hyphen logic.com i'll put the information up on the screen after this and ask for a sample you can actually see a copy of this printed on metallic ink and i think we might have some printed on foil substrate as well but um, contact the u.s office for samples and you will see each of these designs that i've done here today